So this video was sent in to my Discord. So again, if you're not on the Discord, you should join. Over 5,500 people in there now, or 6,500 people in there. There's a lot of people in there. Um, but this was sent in into the Discord, and this is from the uh, the YouTuber. I've actually talked about her a few times, Blogalotties or Cassie Ho, um, and she released this video earlier um, earlier in the in the month. And uh, it's called The Plus Size Model Controversy Are Men Ashamed? So I'm kind of curious as to what she's talking about in this video. I haven't really watched any of it. Um, so let's watch this, this together and see, see what she has to say. You guys, so there was a big controversy that exploded on Reddit the other day about why beauty standards that apply to women don't apply to men. And there's two camps. There's a camp of people saying that men are just pretending not to care because if they do, it'll hurt their ego. And there's another camp of people saying that, well, men don't need to care about something as lowly as body positivity. Caring about your body shape is such like a womanly issue. So I texted a bunch of my guy friends to see what they thought and you will never believe what they said. Okay, so this is that's in, that's an interesting um, interesting take. Personally, as a as a member of the the men, uh, I I honestly think it's one. I don't. I just don't think that you can really give an answer for everyone because everyone's a little bit different. But I think that it's it's not going to be either or of those. That's my guess as to what she found out. Sam and I were in bed the other day and we we're both on our phones as we normally are before we go to bed. I know it's a bad habit, but we do it. Anyway, he turned over and was like, Cassie, you really need to read this post on Reddit. Why are there no plus size or short male models? And it had over 20.6K upvotes. You guys. Now this is a good question. And I am excited to hear what she has to say or hear what she learned because I agree. I, and I've said this before, and I, I have my reasons, right? We've, we've talked about it before. Like, I think the reason why there are more women in the body positivity space or the fat acceptance space is because a big part of it is the pendulum effect that I've talked about before, right? So the pendulum for women was, it was like unrealistic beauty standards. They, they were uh, policed more on their body a lot more than men have been, right? And then we talk about with men, there was like the whole dad bod thing for a few years where that was like a big thing where it was like women wanted men that were a little bit chubby and stuff. So um, I, I do believe, I do believe that men have been policed less on their bodies than women. So I think because the pendulum had swung so far this direction, for women, it swung a lot far in the other direction. And for men, it's kind of, the pendulum hasn't swung as much. Not saying that it hasn't, but I don't think it's swung as much. Already know that I love the body positive movement and what it has done for media, for advertisements. We see so much more diversity. I decided to take a stroll through Target the other day just to kind of see what the diversity in mannequins look like for females versus males. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it was actually really, really interesting because right there in the store is basically the entire point of this video. So when you're. Wow. That's. I think that's a really interesting way to look at it, but I would I would agree. Like I I go into Target a little bit. I don't just just like I I go into Target a lot. Okay, and so <laughs> um, you definitely will notice there's more uh, diversity, I guess, in the shapes of the woman mannequins than the men mannequins, right? Like that is. That's just a fact, right? At least in Target. You're looking in the female section of the store, you see body diversity, different shapes. And or even, sorry, I keep interrupting her, but even like if you think about the, um, there's like the store, um, Torrid is like a, um, now I know there are men's stores. There's casual male XL, I guess. But like the thing, I remember when I was bigger, when I went into that store, like it is very much so, it's like, clothes that are not meant for anyone that's under like 35 i remember shopping there and one it was like super expensive it was like way more expensive than like target or walmart which is what i was used to shopping at and like the clothes were just kind of like not for me at all like i didn't find anything that i really liked um but yeah okay i'll stop in sizes okay and then when you go to the male side you kind of only see one type of mannequin He's lean, he's fit, he has abs and pecs, and you don't really see anything else. That's it. Oh, someone's saying Torrid is expensive. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> that's why I kind of stopped in the middle of this because I don't know how much Torrid is. It, I'm, I'm sure it's probably same price as like casual male XL. So that's why I was like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on from this, <laughs> this one. And when you look at advertisements, 
you kind of see the same thing happening again. There's a lot of diversity in female clothing advertising. Um, I think a lot of this started with Airy, and when they began to showcase different body types, a lot of other retailers started following in the same footsteps because they saw the dollar signs. And regardless of the intention, whether they really wanted to showcase other bodies or they wanted to rake in more dollars, it's happening in media, it's happening in advertisements, and I think that is a good thing. And on the flip side, when you look at male-focused advertisements and male brands, you don't see that diversity. You I mean, this is just, this is also like, I don't think that um, there's much to argue about this. Like, I would say that this is just like true, right? And now, is that a problem? I think that's hopefully where the conversation goes. Um, because I, I really don't think that it's just um, like the title, the title kind of says, are men ashamed? Like, I don't think it's that simple. I think there's a lot more that goes into it. But I do believe that there is an aspect of um, men kind of, um, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I guess you could kind of bring up the whole like toxic, uh, uh, what is it? Toxic masculinity where it's like, oh, no, no, I don't care. It's fine. I'm fine with like whatever ha I have. Right. I think that could be, that is probably maybe a, an aspect of it but i don't think that explains everything now i will say this is something that i've noticed it, this isn't just in body positivity now this is i think in a lot of things that talk about the body for men right where it's not just being jacked like i've i've said a lot and i think it's crazy 75 percent of the people watching this stream of the people that will watch this video are going to be female and as a male content creator that is very abnormal now why is that it's because i talk about weight loss and men just don't talk about it as much i have more friends in the weight loss space that are female than i do male it just is why is that is because there are just more females that are up to talking about it and are up to sharing their experience than there are males that are up to talking about it and up to sharing their experience and of course that bleeds into body positivity but i think it bleeds into all aspects of life again see that kind of ideal athletic lean body look are there male plus size models is that a thing i really dove into this and started reading all the comments on reddit i wrote a blog post about it in response to why are there no plus size or short male models i don't give a sh about media representation my short a is just trying to find pants that fit <laughs> Hey, at least he's being honest, you know? <laughs> and there was just an entire thread about how men couldn't find pants that fit and how that was actually the struggle, not the representation struggle. It just felt very pragmatic. Body positivity is for women. Men are expected to face reality. Um, kind of sounds like body positivity is for the weak, aka women, and men are strong so they can face reality. Moving on, I went onto my blog post and there was a comment from Pamela. Her husband said this, your typical assumed straight male doesn't even care to see other men's bodies at all and are probably not scrutinizing the model or consciously comparing themselves. Models are only necessary because clothes look like fabric sacks if they're not on a person. So of course this well, that's interesting. So I, I, this is now, I don't know how true this is, but I, I do believe that there is some truth to that. Right. So it's kind of talking about the whole comparison. Right. And I've, I've talked about it before, like comparing yourself isn't helpful, but I do believe that it is something that happens more with women than it does with men. Like I know myself, I don't really compare myself to other dudes. I just, I don't care. And I, even myself, when I was bigger, I didn't even, it was never something that I thought much about. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, I would not recommend it, but I'm not saying that that's like an inherent problem. And I think there is a reason why it happens, right? Like there is a reason why women are comparing themselves more than men are comparing themselves. Again, and it goes back to what we talked about earlier, which is there's there's been more policing and there's been more like, hey, women, you need to be this thing. So just remember that, right? So it goes back to that. And I think it always will go Go back to that. Sellers are going to try to advertise their wares in the best possible light by portraying them on the most conventionally attractive models. Going back to that very pragmatic, like, well, of course you would put it on that body type because it looks the best 
type of attitude. But then it made me wonder, do men actually care? And are they just saying they don't care? I don't think that it's because they care less, but rather that caring would be a significantly worse blow to their identity. So I got really interested about this and decided to look up toxic masculinity because I know nothing about it. And here are some descriptions of what that is. Suppressing emotions or masking distress, maintaining an appearance of hardness, violence as an indicator of power. Think tough guy behavior. Now, I will say, again, like I've said, there certainly are dudes that can probably look at these things and it might, um, it might explain why they might feel this way. But I don't think all guys, and honestly, I don't even think most guys feel this way. Um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm being optimistic because I don't feel this way. It's just not how I am. And it's not how really any of my friends are. But again, obviously, I don't know everyone in the world. Um, but I do believe that this is probably an aspect for a good amount of men at least. Then I went back on Reddit to see all of the perspectives surrounding this conversation, and I was able to find someone from the other side, um, although it only had three points. So from Simon Charles, he says that, pretty much all men I know have these issues and suffer for it, but they don't speak about them. If you open your eyes and watch men's reactions when women talk sh about baldness, shortness, etc., you'll see they're silently taking it. The uncomfortable expressions are there. Men know that they'll be shamed for opening up. That's why they say, I don't give a sh. Laura says that it's only with my closest friends during deep discussions that they'll admit to these feelings. Maybe it's not widespread, but I do know how it affects my male friends. Body. I do think like a big part of a big part of it is um a big part of it does lie in that right men there are a lot of men that probably are afraid to open up and like growing up you know at least in america it's like you know be a man be a tough guy men don't cry like come on like you gotta you pick up your chin and move forward right like that's obviously not helpful um so i again i'm sure that plays a part image issues do exist for men they just don't talk about it and they super suppress it because if they do talk about it they run the risk of seeming too feminine or emotional and therefore weak and not tough and successful like how a guy should be men and women are just held to two really different standards of beauty women are told that they need to look young and we've bought into this because we bought into the creams we bought into the plastic surgery that goes along with it whereas men they apparently look sexier as they get older and they like those wrinkles and they like that peppered hair and it's just so interesting and i think unfair that that's how standards of beauty are judged for men versus women then i got super interested in this and i was like are there male plus size models out there like who are they i found a list and there's a guy named kelvin davis with Dude, this, oh, this makes me so happy. This is when she asked, when she asked if there's any male plus size models. This is my friend, Kelvin. Like, we've been following each other on Instagram for so long, for like years and years and years now. And I was gonna, like, if she didn't bring him up, I was gonna bring him up because he's great. Like, he is, he is awesome. Like, I highly recommend anyone go follow him because he is, he's great. Like, he is awesome. Um, and he's super funny, but th uh, that's so funny, man. I was going to talk about him in this video. Oh, man. Okay, sorry. With 92,000 followers, we've got Zach Miko with 88K and um, Ricardo Ornorato with 78.9. So those followings are really small in comparison to female body positive plus size models. So let me just show you. You got Ashley Graham with 11.3 million followers. Then you've got my friend Iskra with 4.5 million followers and Tess Holiday with 2.1 million followers. I mean, it's like I said, it's just a fact. Dudes don't talk about this as much. And honestly, like, I know that maybe this is me being toxically masculine or whatever, but like, I do believe that there are a lot of men that genuinely don't care. And I don't mean that in like a bad way, but they just, they just don't care. And not in a way that they're like suppressing things. I'm sure there's a good amount of people that are also doing that. But I do believe that there are a lot of men that just, they might not be super, super overweight. They might just be kind of chubby and they genuinely do not care about that. And I think that there's a lot more men in that camp than there are women in that camp. 
So what is that saying? Because when you are following someone on social media, that pretty much is a private thing. So if guys really wanted to see other guys that look like them, they would just follow the male plus size model, right? So you can kind of see what the desire for that is. And maybe that's why the stores don't have plus size male mannequins because there isn't that desire for it. I just... I, yeah, I think part of it is there's just not that demand. Like, there's not that many people that want that, right? If, if you, I know looking at followers isn't the best way, but if you look at the followers, a couple thousand versus 11 million, like, that's a huge difference there. You know, from looking at Sam's feed, that he follows a lot of athletes and business leaders. Men aren't as focused on their appearance because they're focused on the accomplishments, on the power, on maybe the money and the stuff like that, not like physical body vessel stuff. Whereas women are so focused on their appearance that they need leaders in the space who look like them so that you know we can feel better we can feel more represented because there's been centuries of men and media telling women what they should look like that only now through the body positive movement are we healing whereas men didn't have to endure centuries of you don't look good enough really it's just more like you need to win wars and make money and provide for your family it just hasn't really ever been about the way that they look I yeah, and like that's exactly kind of what I was saying earlier. It was the pendulum, right? For women, the pendulum had swung so far the other way that now it's swinging far the, the opposite, right? For men, the, at least when it comes to how your body looks, the pendulum was never super far. And I think a big part of it, like she talked about how men follow other athletes. Like obviously athletes usually look pretty ripped and stuff, but there's a good amount of athletes that look like normal dudes. Like if you look at the UFC, there's tons of like normal looking dudes that are absolute beast if you look at baseball even if you look at football like you're an alignment like you're big you're big for a reason like i think for men there's like being big has been seen as that's a good thing you know like a lot of men want to be big like that's a like i want to be big for women it's like i don't want to be big like there's for most women i would say i don't know okay maybe i'm overstepping my boundaries but like i would say for most women they don't look at a <laughs> like a lineman and think yeah man that's what i want to be it's like uh i'd i'm i want to be small like that's like that's the that what society has maybe thrust upon you if that makes sense I feel a little bit out of place talking about all this stuff because I'm not a guy. So I decided to talk to Sam. I asked him if he wanted to see more diversity in the arena of representation of body types for men. And for your reference, Sam is like a mid-sized guy. And he said he didn't really think it was necessary. Then I had him text one of his guy friends who was like, a big, much bigger, like taller guy. And his response was, hmm, I've never really thought about that. But maybe if I could see a tuxedo or something more form fitting on my body, that might be cool. But at the end of the day, I don't really care. Then I texted my other guy friend who is shorter. He's like, uh, you know, I'm really thinking about this. And honestly, how it's done now is fine because if I saw a body that actually represented my body I might not want to buy it because I could see how bad it would look <laughs> and then he just kind of laughed it off I talked to a gay friend of mine and asked him his opinion on how he would want to see clothes represented and he said that in the gay community there is a little bit of a body positive revolution happening right now like very very small but he can see it starting to happen and that when he sees clothes on guys that are like super buff and ripped Sometimes it makes him feel bad. So those are the responses that I got in my circle of friends. And it looks like it pretty much reflects the Reddit thread with a lot of people saying they literally don't care. And then some people saying that, yeah, it does affect them. So leave your comments down below. I'm so curious and intrigued by this topic. I want to hear what you think and what the men in your life think. So I think that this, man, this was really interesting. I'm glad that we checked this out. I, again, like I'm not going to sit here and say I have the answers and I know exactly, um, exactly why this is, but I think this video did explore, I think this is a, a much bigger topic than just, you know, what her video was like almost 10 minutes long, right? Um, I think that this is worth exploring and I know a lot of people are, and I know a lot of people are like kind of curious about this, but I do think that it's interesting. Like, 
I think a big part of it, like I explained, was there's just less less expectations placed on men in the past, and so that pendulum hasn't swung as far in the opposite direction to where men are like, I need, we need more representation. Like we've felt like we we've been put down or whatever. Um, but I'm kind of curious as, as to what um, what people um, you know think in the comments section down below.